Hi, this is Father Jeremiah of Grace Anglican Church here in Gastonia, North Carolina again, and today I want to talk about private confession, or as it's called in our 2019 Book of Common Prayer, the reconciliation of penitence. Now, before I get into that, I just want to make a request and ask that if you're enjoying the content that you're hearing here on our YouTube channel, please subscribe to our channel so that you get updates and notifications of when I post a new video and like this video and other people can discover it and hear about Grace Anglican and the things that we believe and the things that we're teaching the faithful to better understand about the Anglican tradition and the Anglican way of living the Christian life. Private Confession, the Reconciliation of Penitence. This is a practice that goes back into the, into the ancient parts of the church. Way early on, the idea of coming to the priest or the bishop and confessing your sins and hearing a word of absolution has been something that's been part and parcel of the church. Now, in John chapter 20, Jesus came to the disciples on the first night after his resurrection, and he said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. The church has always interpreted this passage as a reference to the power of the bishop and priest to absolve sins, to speak the word of forgiveness to the penitent, to the faithful, to those in need of hearing that word of forgiveness. Now, it doesn't mean that if you never go to a priest or a bishop or a pastor or a minister and confess your sins in some type of private situation to where they then speak this word of absolution to you that you can't be forgiven. That's not what it's saying, but it is saying that if you refuse to repent of your sins, then forgiveness is withheld from you. If you go to a priest and you confess your sins, but you're not repentant about it, then that forgiveness isn't given to you. However, if you go to a priest and you confess your sins with true repentance, you receive forgiveness. They speak that word of absolution over you, that word of forgiveness over you, and it becomes a reality in your life. It renews the forgiveness that you have received through faith in Christ, through baptism, through receiving the Lord's Supper. That forgiveness is renewed within you and reapplied to you in order to relieve your conscience of your sins. It's a very important aspect of the faith. Now, in me saying that it's important, what do I mean by that? Do I mean everyone has to go to private confession? No, I don't. You're not required to go to private confession. We have a very helpful phrase here in our church. It's called, it goes, all may, none must, some should. And when it comes to private confession, all may come to private confession. Anyone is welcome to come and confess their sins privately to the priest, to me, to the bishop if he's here and hear that word of forgiveness. However, none are required to. It's not a requirement of faith. It's not a requirement of practice to come and confess your sins to your priest. However, there, I think there are certain situations where some should. Those moments when you find your conscience being broken and burdened and pushed down and hindered and harmed by a sin that you've committed, a sin that no one else knows that you've committed except for God himself. You've hidden it from the world, and yet it weighs you down. You've prayed for forgiveness. You've confessed that sin to God, and yet your mind will not let it go. Your conscience will not let it go. The burden of that guilt from that sin remains on you. In moments like that, I think having this right of healing, as it's also called, this reconciliation to go to a priest and say, bless me for I have sinned, and having an opportunity to confess to God and to man that you have sinned, and then to confess particular ways you've sinned, and to hear that word of forgiveness, to hear the priest look at you and say that God has given power and authority to his priests and bishops to pronounce forgiveness to all who truly repent and believe in him. And then by Christ's authority, I absolve you from all your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. To hear that word of forgiveness applied to that particular sin that you may be wrestling with and struggling with is truly a word of healing. To hear that that truly is forgivable. That thing that your conscience won't let go, that you've repented of, that you're turning from, that you're striving against, to hear a priest say, you are forgiven, relieves all of that. It can relieve that conscience, that guilt, and bring the healing that you need. Now, this idea of confession to others is also found in the book of James. At the end of his letter, Chapter 5, verse 16, James writes, Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. 
Now here, James is looking at it in the general perspective of confessing not just to priests or to bishops, but to other fellow Christians, to sit down and confess your sins to one another and to pray for one another, to extend that forgiveness of Christ to one another. And again, it doesn't have to be with a priest, but priests and bishops within our tradition follow that interpretation of John 20 that recognizes that there is some type of authority given to a priest to pronounce forgiveness, to absolve you of your sins in the name of Christ. It's not because there's something special or powerful or some magical ability in the priest, but it's simply because the word of Christ said, I've given you that ability and that authority to pronounce this forgiveness that I have won on the cross for sinners. I've given you the authority to look at a sinner who is repentant, who is confessing his sins, and look at them and say with all seriousness, with all authority, I absolve you in the name of Christ, not in my name, not in the church's name, but in the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Because it's only through Christ that sins are truly forgiven. And my role in that is to simply extend that word of forgiveness to the penitent, to that person struggling with sin, struggling with guilt, struggling with the need to hear that Christ truly does forgive, that Christ removes their sin and casts it away from them. 